Hi everyone and welcome to this drawing video. In this video I'm going to be working on a drawing of a squirrel. Uh, I really love squirrels, they always seem to be hanging around in the garden causing absolute mayhem while trying to find food and I just really wanted to try drawing one. In terms of the materials I used, I started off by using my mechanical pencil with HB LEDs on smooth Bristol board paper. To smooth the shading I used blending sticks and to add highlights later on I used a small eraser. But please don't worry too much about the equipment you use, it really doesn't matter so much. As long as you have a pencil and paper in front of you, you'll be able to create something like this. So as you can see, I started off by sketching the front of the squirrel's face. This is going to be an angled side view, so working on the bridge of the nose first, angling it upwards and then smoothing it off towards the top of the head. Uh, also getting a rough outline of the nose and having a line angled downwards from that towards the mouth. Uh, the mouth runs almost parallel to the bridge of the nose, so that really helps with the alignment of that. The squirrel's eye begins roughly in line with the corner of its mouth, and it's, the eye is actually quite large in proportion to the rest of its face. And then a little further back from the eye, working on the ears. As this is an angled view of the squirrel and not a, a straight on portrait, I wanted to keep it more natural looking, so having the ear in the background a little bit angled further forward than the ear in the foreground. At this point I'm just adding rough shapes and keeping the lines nice and light. Uh, it's really important not to add thick outlines at this stage of the drawing, because I want to add some highlights later on. I then sketched the top of the squirrel's back and then actually started adding the arm in the foreground. I'm going to have the squirrel holding a chestnut and that's probably why it has a big smile on its face. Also adding a rough outline of the arm in the background, uh, then focusing on the, the claws and some of the rough details of the claws holding the chestnut. I then went on to sketching the rest of the squirrel's body, adding its legs in the foreground and the background, and as it's sitting down with the chestnut, there's a very sharp angle to it, it has a very hunched back, so having a sharp, almost vertical line for its back. And underneath the fur of its legs, I added its feet, focusing the sharper outlines to the feet and the claws in the foreground. And after that, I roughly sketched some quick outlines of its tail. Once the outlines were completed, it was time for the shading, and I started off by shading the most prominent part of the drawing, and the part of the drawing that I wanted to spend the most time on, and that was the squirrel's face. Uh, starting by adding some dark shading to the underside of the nose and inside the nostril, making sure to leave a highlighted area towards the top of the nose to show the light reflecting. Then I started adding some short fur going from the nose all the way to the top of the head. My method for drawing fur or hair is to start off by adding some quick fine strokes with the pencil, then to use the blending stick over the top of that, and then after that adding some quick fine strokes with a small eraser. And then going through that same process in the same area a few times. It's a great and simple way to create a fur texture that looks like it's got a lot of layers. When you're working on a drawing like this with lots of fur, it's really important not to worry too much about the line placement, as fur is always moving, um, so it's really not a good idea to try and copy a reference exactly. Just using quick fine strokes with a relaxed hand is the best way to go about this to make the drawing look a lot more natural. I added some darker fur above the eye, like an eyebrow, and then added some lighter fur around the mouth. Also adding some spots around above the mouth in place of where I was going to add the whiskers later on. I added some darker shaded fur underneath the squirrel's mouth and then used the small eraser to show some fur overlapping that area. Um, it's really great method to use the small eraser in areas where you want to show some fur overlapping some shaded areas. It's a process that I really like to use in drawings like this and you'll see me use it for areas like the squirrel's ears. For the squirrel's eye, I added some very dark shading, making sure to leave a highlight towards the top right. Um, I also added some highlights in the inner corner of the eye and to the bottom eyelid. I also made sure to add some extra shading around the eyelids to show where they kind of protrude from the surface. Surrounding the eye is much lighter fur, so using very light strokes with the pencil and the blending stick, and then adding lots of highlights with the small eraser. After that, I then added a bunch of whiskers using quick fine strokes with a relaxed hand, uh, adding them around the nose and mouth and above the squirrel's eyes. For the squirrel's ears, I started off by using the same fur method for the fur on the outside of the ear, and then I added some darker shading to the inside of the ear, using the uh, blending sticks to keep that shading nice and smooth. Uh, afterwards, I then used my small eraser to overlap the fur, as I mentioned before. Using the small eraser to just show fur overlapping the ear is a great way to add more depth to the drawing and make it seem more realistic. 
also adding some lighter and more blurred shading to the ear in the background. Moving downwards from that, I wanted to add the shading and details to the arms and hands of the squirrel, uh, using the same fur method, but using the quick fine strokes of the pencil in lots of random directions, then using the blending stick and the small eraser, and just building up the layers in that same sequence, uh, making sure to add some darker shading towards the lower part of the arms, um, but not leaving any dark outlines. Instead of leaving dark outlines, I decided to use my small eraser to add highlighted outlines to give more of an environmental lighting effect. I added darker shading to the underside of each finger and claw, and to the details of the chestnut. I wanted these features to be also very prominent in the drawing, along with the squirrel's face. For the fur on the arm in the background and the squirrel's chest, I made sure to leave this faded and blurred as a great way of focusing on the prominent details in the foreground of this drawing. Um, I think if I added sharper lines to every feature in the background, it would really take away from the depth. So leaving those details blurred is a great way to add more of a 3D and uh, a realistic detail to this drawing. I continued the same fur process along the rest of the squirrel's body, uh, along its back, adding some darker shading and adding some darker shading uh, along the back of its the leg in the foreground and underneath the arms on its belly. And in the areas where I wanted to have the highlighted sections overlapping these areas and to use the highlights to outline some of the details like the leg, I was using the small eraser, just using it with quick fine strokes in the same way I was using the pencil. For the details of the feet, I made sure to add lots of shading underneath them to show up those 3D details of the, the shadow underneath. And then I focused more detail to the foot in the foreground, adding more detail to the fur. And uh, for the foot in the background, I kept it a bit more faded and more highlighted. I also made sure to add lots of shading to the fur of the belly above the feet, uh, just adding lots of shading to this area in general. It was a great way to add more depth to the drawing overall, and I feel like it had a really great effect. Um, it really made the, the squirrel seem like it was sitting on the ground. And for the final feature of the drawing, it was time to add the details to the squirrel's tail. I, I made sure to add lots of dark shading towards the inside edge of the tail, and I had it kind of overlapping the rest of the squirrel's back. And in a way, it kind of acted as a border going all the way around the, the back of the squirrel and really made the highlighted areas of the back stand out by having that contrast between the highlighted outlines of the back and the really dark shading on the inside of the tail. And then for the rest of the details of the tail, I added quick fine strokes with the pencil, then used the blending stick and the eraser to help blend and smudge those lines outwards, and just continued to add layers in that same process. As a final touch to this drawing, I decided to add a light area of shading in the background. And this acted as another way for me to make use of the small eraser to add some highlighted fur going all the way around the outlines of this squirrel, adding some highlighted fur along the top of its face and around its arms and around the top of its back. And after that, this drawing was completed. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I really hope it's helped out in some way. If you do work on a drawing of a squirrel, uh, if, you, if you follow this video along, then feel free to show me your work on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. I'd really love to see. If you want to see more videos like this, then make sure you're subscribed and any likes or shares are hugely appreciated and it really means a lot to me. If you want to follow my progress and keep up to date with everything I'm working on, then be sure to check out the links in the description box below to check out my Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. And once again, thank you so much for supporting this channel and thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it helps out. I hope you're having an amazing day and I'll see you all soon.